everybody clap your hands. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around for you. Raise your hand. Thank you for being on live stream. Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you for your anointing of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God. We thank you that you do all things well. We honor you tonight for your blessings over our children, each one of them, name by name. Pray that you bless them, our sons in college, our daughters, wherever they are. We just thank you for all of our children. We plead the blood, the blood of Jesus over our children. We post the blood or line around their lives. Thank you for all your help in their lives. Thank you that you are a good God. No weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. God is on their side. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. God is a good God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank the Lord for the choir as they sing.
they stir it up. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We need your power, your spirit, and your anointing in these last and evil days. So teach us how to stir up God's power in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being online tonight. Thank you for being wherever you are. God has a word for you. I speak tonight as Pastor Lee Hall. He's going to speak a word into your life from the very heart of God. He spoke it to our men on Monday morning, and it changed some men. And so just know God is a good God, and he loves you. I've known Pastor Hall for over 25, 30 years, and uh, he's a man of faith that loves the Lord. Somebody say amen. So would you clap your hands for him as he comes and minister to us on this night. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen, and thank you, Pastor Simpkins. It's always great to come here to the Emmanuel Christian Center where, where Jesus is Lord. And, you know, I love your pastor. As, as he said, for a long, long, very long time, we have walked this journey together as men of God through a lot that we've seen, we've experienced, and uh, we're still standing. Amen. Um, we're still standing because we love the Lord. Amen. And we love his people. We are called to be lifetime pastors. Not, not some fly by night that will come in and, and leave when things ain't well. We, we weather the storms and we live life in ways that are, that are challenging, in ways that are very satisfying. Let me just say, if, 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 um, if you know somebody tonight, if, whether you're online or whether you're in here and you, you have us online, if you know somebody tonight that has ever been hurt in any kind of way, let me encourage you uh, to send them a text and tell them to hop online right now. Because what we're about to talk to you about tonight hopefully will free some people that's been holding on to some things in their past since childhood, since the divorce, since the breakup, since the kids, since the boss, since the firing, since the friend. Let me encourage you to take a moment this today and, and just invite somebody online to just step online. If they're not coming on the way, just have, just have them jump online right now. And if they'll listen, they'll learn. God's going to bless them. And he's going to heal them. And, um, um, and you will be the evangelist because you invited him. Amen. So take a moment and do that if you don't mind. Take a moment and do that if you don't mind. While you're doing it, let me thank my wife, Angela. Amen. For, for supporting and for your support and for your love. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you have a Bible, whether you're online or whether you are in the sanctuary, would you turn with me to Matthew 18? I just want to lift up a couple of scriptures tonight, and 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 that's going to be our run. That's going to be our runway. And once we get in the air, we, we're going we're going to bring in different scriptures along the way. Amen. Matthew 18. That's the first book of the New Testament. Matthew 18, beginning at verse 21 and 22. Then Peter came. To Jesus and I asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me up to seven times? Jesus answered in verse 22, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Now, Father, speak to us tonight. Let us hear your voice. Let us experience what you will have us to know tonight. Speak to us. Speak to those who are in the sanctuary those who are online, those who are texting to get their friends online in a hurry. God, I pray that everybody who hears this message tonight will not only hear it, but do something about it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Again, Pastor Simpkins, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Tonight, I want to talk about a subject entitled Forgiveness is not a fair system. It's a grace system. Forgiveness is not a fair system. 
It's a grace system. At the very end of June, I turned 60 years old. Praise God. We went out to Myrtle Beach to celebrate my 60th birthday. And one evening, we were walking on the beach and just having a good time chopping it up. Some of my family members had joined us there because it was a great occasion. And um, we were walking, and all of a sudden, there was this crowd of people who were all gathered, and they were and there was motion and commotion going on. And so, and so we, you know, I said, let's go see what's going on. And so we walked up on the crowd, and, and lo and behold, there was a shark that someone had caught. And, um, you know, he was about as long as this pulpit, maybe, maybe just a little longer. And um, he was flapping around on the sand. And the people were gathered. And so we walked up a little close. You know, I was the most, um, I was the most um, adventurous one. Everybody else was, was kind of taking a pitch and run. I looked for my wife, and she had took a pitch and ran up on the hill. She was like, I don't, don't want to get bit. I said, you can't get you up there. And so, and so we were there, and, 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 and all the people were around, and then somebody grabbed the shark by the tail and tried to throw it back in the water. But it didn't go very far, and he came back up, and he was flapping and fussing, and, 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 and the water was going through his, his gills, and sand was coming all out of his mouth. And, 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 and then he grabbed him again. He threw him, he threw him farther in the water. He, he was stunned. He was trying to go, and he was, he was trying to get there, and and then finally he swam on off, hopefully never to be seen again. And I know he was hurt because he had blood coming out of his mouth from the hook. But one thing I do know about that shark, he didn't stop swimming and say, you better have. <laughs> uh -huh. He didn't stop and, 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 and flap his tail at us to say, you know what, I'm going to get y'all later. That shark hit that ocean, the Atlantic, and he took off because he was free all of a sudden. He realized he had lost his freedom. But then he also realized, I've gained it back. And I'm going to be careful next time I bite on some kind of, some kind of bait. Y'all, that's what forgiveness looks like. Forgiveness looks like I'm going to let you off the hook and never put you back on again. Yeah. I, I'm never going to think that you're going to be perfect just because you may have hurt me one time or even twice or even five times. If I forgive you, I let you off the hook and you're gone forever. In our text, in our text today, in our text today, um, uh, uh, Peter is talking to Jesus and uh, um, they had been arguing earlier about who was the greatest and all such as that. And so, and so he says, Peter says, he comes to Jesus and he asks Jesus, he said, he said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times. Because, because back in the day, um, the rabbinic law said basically three times and you're good. And so Peter, saw, Peter said, I'm going to just, you know, I'm talking to Jesus. So I better put it up a little bit higher. Maybe seven times and we're good. And Jesus turns around and says, no, nah, Peter, not seven times, but 77 times. And really, I'm not counting them. We'll talk about that later. And so, y'all, all of us have been hurt. And all of us have hurt somebody. Am I right about it? Yeah. We've all, and, those, and, and, and all of us who have hurt somebody, when we've gone to someone to say, I'm sorry, we wanted them to forgive us right away. Am I right about it? When the word, I'm sorry, came off of our lip, we wanted, we wanted, it's okay, right away. Am I right about it? Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, we want that, but what about when they hurt us? Are we the same kind of person? So I want to tell you tonight, first of all, if you want forgiveness, give it. Hope you're taking some notes tonight. Hope you didn't text somebody. If you want forgiveness, then you ought to forgive it. We say in the Bible, we quote the scripture, we say words like this. We say, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those 
who trespass against us. Forgive us of our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive those, uh, uh, those debts against us. Am I right about it? We forgive our debtors. And so if you want forgiveness, because basically forgiveness is I'm, I'm letting you go and I'm not going to hold you accountable for what you did. I'm not going to, once I say I forgive you, it's over, it's done. We may not be friends again. We may not reconcile because forgiveness doesn't mean that you reconcile. It just means you let them off the hook. It takes one person to forgive and two people to reconcile. Amen. So if you've been hurt in your life before, and all of us have, we got, God wants us to forgive people. When, when, when we pray that prayer, we, he didn't say just pray the prayer because it sounds good. It's in the Bible. He means if you're going to pray that prayer, you need to, you, you need to, we need to step up and say, I'm going to forgive them because I have been, first of all, forgiven. How many of y'all know you've been forgiven? All of us have been forgiven by God time and time and time again. All of us have said, I'm not going to do it no more and did it. And then did it again. And then did it again. And five years later, we did it again. And ten years, we did it again. And God has forgiven us time and time and time. And I want to know, if God has forgiven us, then, <clears throat> then we have to forgive folk who hurt us. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what the hurt is. Because y'all know how we are. If it's, if it's something that's simple, okay. <laughs> but if it was grievous, oh, Jesus. If you want forgiveness, you got to give it. Yes, yes, they're going to talk about you. Yes, they're going to they're gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna do some things behind your back. Yes, uh, and all such as that. But understand this, that if we want forgiveness, we must give it and let God heal the situation. So I'm going to start right there. If we want forgiveness, we got to forgive it. I, and I don't care if they broke up your home. I don't care if they hurt your child. Maybe they took your husband or your wife. God, it doesn't matter with God because God says we still got to forgive. Yeah. I know it's going to be some hard, it's, it's going to be some hard stuff to chew at, at one point. But understand, it's going to be good for you. It's going to be freeing. Just stay with me and don't, and don't log out yet. Stay on the computer in your mind. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. And, and, so, and so if you want if you, want to, if you want forgiveness, first of all, you need to, you, you need to give it. You need to give it. You, want to, you, you need to give it. Give it first. Give it first. Peter said, how many times, Lord? Which meant it happened more than once. How many times they're going to talk about me? How many times they're going to stab me in my back? How many times they're going to put us down? How many times they're going to speak ill of us? Jesus said, no, not seven, not, not seven times, Peter. Let's go 77 because forgiveness is it, not a fair system, <laughs> but it's full of grace. Yeah. You know why? Because God gave us grace. Yes, some of y'all may have been hurt from childhood, yeah. and you're holding on to some things. But let me say it like this. Lack of forgiveness breaks our fellowship with God. Really? But pastor, you're talking to church people. Because some of the most bitter people there is, is in church. Y'all saw something like that? I ain't saying nothing here at Emmanuel, but you've seen some folk. I know I have in my day. Lack of forgiveness breaks fellowship with God. I don't care how, how, how much you shout, how much you sing, how much you give. It breaks fellowship with God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Verses 23 and 24. So, so if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. You know, it breaks fellowship so much so that God said, God said, if, you, if you're trying to give some money, even your tithe, hold on. Go deal with it. Now check this out. When he says go deal with it, I know some of us, when somebody hurt us, we want them to, we want them to apologize, right? Don't we? 
We want to hear the words, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, right? Yeah. But that's not how God plans stuff. That's, that, that's not God's way. God said, you go. You go deal with it. Yeah. Let me just, let me say like this here. If you think they're going to come and apologize, understand one thing. You may be hurt, but they've gone on and they're living their lives yeah. like nothing ever happened. They ain't thought about you. They ain't worried about you. Uh, you you're not in their sleep. You're not in their dream. You think they're hurt. You're holding on, and they've moved on with life. Yeah. If you want to get it right, the Bible says you go, you go, and you go deal with it. God doesn't want us to suffer. He, he wants us to release anger and bitterness and hurt and all kinds of things that, uh, that come in our heart. He doesn't, but he wants us because, y'all, sometimes we have believers who are walking around. I hope you hear me on Facebook and wherever you are tonight. Sometimes we have believers walking around in emotional and mental prisons. We drink the poison, but we expect them to die. We walk around in emotional prisons, but to forgive is to set the prisoner free and discover that that prisoner is you. Yeah. Am I helping anybody tonight? Yeah. We're talking about forgiveness because right now you're thinking, you're thinking in your mind right now, okay, okay, okay. Pastor, you're talking to me right now. Yeah, I know some folk. I, I've been holding a grudge since I was 10 years old. I've been holding a grudge since I was 35. I've been holding a grudge since, 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 since that thing happened. And you've been a prisoner for a long time. And nobody knows it. But you wonder why you get angry. We wonder why we get sick. We wonder why we have a mental breakdown. Because when we hold on to when we hold on to unforgiveness, studies have already been shown with Mayo and other clinics that uh, it affects us mentally. <clears throat> And physically, and sometimes it can cause cancer and other diseases in our body because we are holding on to pain. Haven't you often wondered why when a person has gone through such horrible pain and all of a sudden they've caught cancer along the way, didn't they go through enough? They held on. It was hurt. It was bad. They had a right to feel angry, upset, and everything else. But they never let that go. And something else developed in their bodies. You gotta look at the big picture here. I hope you, I hope you, I hope you texting somebody say you better listen in. You better listen in. Because harboring ill feelings against someone is harmful to our bodies. Haven't you wondered? Haven't you wondered that why people get mad and kill people? Haven't you ever wondered why gangs shoot each other up? Oh, you gonna respect me in my territory. I'm not gonna let you, 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 you gonna wear that jacket? In my territory? Oh, oh, you shot my friend. Oh, we're going to shoot you. We're not going to forgive you. We're going to get one of y'all's. You ever thought about that? Yeah. We live in a society that's like that. You know why? Because there's this thing called unforgiveness. But the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. Yeah. Not for us to repay anybody or anything. We just, need to, we, just need to, we just need to encourage people. God said, I'll take care of the situation. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, we owe people forgiveness even when they don't ask for it. Even when they don't say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? We owe them forgiveness. How often have we held, do we hold on against someone when they haven't apologized? When we're wrong, when we expect them to say, I'm sorry, the Bible doesn't require us. We don't require it of us. Y'all, we got to, you know, even if they don't ask for it, they don't deserve it, we have to, we have to learn what it means to forgive them. Yeah. Let me give you a personal story I gave the brothers the other day. But I want to illustrate it. You know, at 17, at 17, I went to stay with my father. And at 17, he was a wild man. And he was footloose and fancy free. And he loved the sisters. In fact, he loved anything, literally. And he was late to dinner one day because I was five minutes late from seeing my mother. And he told me, go see this woman. 
Can I get a personal? He told me, I'm taking you back home to, my, to your mama. But he didn't say it in nice terms. My mom told me before I go, he said, son, you, 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 you shouldn't go stay with him. But she let me go anyway. He sent me back home to my mama the next day. And I was hurt. I was angry. I was disappointed. My mama didn't say a word. She never said a word. She saw what was going on. She never said a word. And for 23 years, I carried him around everywhere I went. I carried him. I was so angry at him. I was mad at him for 23 years. I hope I'm helping somebody with a father issue. I carried him. I couldn't stand to hear his voice. But I would still go to him, and I would, I would, try, to, I would try to talk with him just a little bit. And, and one day I asked myself, what, what was the worst mistake you ever made? Hoping that he would say, he sent me home. He never said a word. He said, oh, I, something else he said he did. I, I would drop hints over the years. Boy, I couldn't stand that man. But I was a Christian all those years. And I carried him around. He, he was heavy. And I didn't realize how heavy he was. And one day God said, you go and you forgive him. You call him on the phone because I live here. He, he lives in Texas. You call him on the phone and you tell him, forgive me for the times for all this time that I have, I have held this against you and how I felt about you all these years, you call him on the phone, Lee. God does know my name. He does call me by my name. So I called him on the phone and said, man, I just want to tell you something. I need you to listen right here. I need you to forgive me for holding on to you all these years and being angry with you. He said, what do you mean? got to tell you that the Holy Spirit said he ain't gonna know until you tell him. He said, what do, you, what do you mean? I said, you remember this lady named Corinne? I said, you dissed me for her. You sent me back home to my mama and I've been angry with you ever since because I want to stay with you because I needed my father in 17 and you hurt me to my core and I've held on for all these years. You know what he said? Son, I had no idea. You know what he said next? Son, will you forgive me? <laughs> and since then, we have been trying to pull it together. And I can honestly say today, we call each other <laughs> about every week. Check in. How you doing? Because we wasted 23 years. I don't know who you are or who you are out on social media. You've held on and you've made excuses and you said, I ain't forgiven him. I ain't forgiven her. I ain't forgiven them. Even if they don't ask for it, even if they don't deserve it, God has called us to forgive. You raped me. You assaulted me sexually. You beat me. You broke my family. You created all kind of hurt and stuff in my life. And you expect me to forgive you? God says yes. Because they beat him. They strung him up on the cross. They pierced him in his side. They took God himself and they did all they could to destroy him. But we owe people forgiveness even if they don't deserve it, church. I didn't say it's going to be easy, but you know what? You want to be free or you want to be in prison? I don't know about you, but I want to be free. I hope tonight somebody hearing this message you already thinking about it. It's already back in your spirit. You already going back. You already thinking about it. You got to let them go. We owe it to them. Well, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Because you, you know, you, you we do come to church. We do know the Bible, right? Pastor's 
preached here for about 16, 17 years. How long he preached here? He's taught you all kind of word. Uh, but, 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 but the Bible says we can't just hear the word. We got to hear the word and do what it says. Jesus said forgiveness, right? And so, and so, and so, and so we owe people forgiveness. We owe forgiveness to those who deserve it, who don't deserve it. Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, verses 59 and 60, I got to give you some Bible because I know you're thinking right now, Pastor, you're crazy up there. I got to hand you some Bible. The Bible says in, in Acts 7, 59 and 60, it says, and they were, as, as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said that, the Bible says he died. Stephen was an ordinary man in the first church, deacon. And they stoned him to death because of his faith. And as he was being stoned to death, the Bible says he cried out to God, Father, don't hold this against them. So for those of us who say we ain't Jesus, <laughs> we, and you know, we, you know we'll say that, right? I ain't Jesus. <laughs> Stephen was not Jesus either. He was a man like me. And so, and so he, asked, he asked God to forgive him. And, and, and we know what Jesus said when he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive him because they don't know what they're doing. And so, yes, we owe it to them even if they don't deserve it because it's going to set you free. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for us. You saw that chair? When he told me I'm sorry, man, I felt light. And I didn't realize how hard the burden was for all those years. I had no idea. I didn't preach and everything else. In the middle of passing the church, holding on to stuff. Anybody tonight? God wants to set somebody free tonight. It could be from childhood, 20s, 30s, 40s, teenagers. It could be right now. God just wants us to be free. He wants us to let it go. And I know you saying to yourself, Pastor, no. You're either going to do what the word of God says or you're not. I'm not saying it's easy. But now that you know, you got to do it. I don't know any of y'all's situations. Yeah, they wrecked your nice car. <laughs> yeah, they turned their back on you at work. They took your inheritance. <laughs> they stole your innocence and put you in a bad financial position, yet we owe them forgiveness. All the mess we done done, and God has forgiven us time and time again. How can we not? How can we pray God that's not God and say, I ain't forgiven you? It doesn't mean we have to reconcile with him. It don't even mean you got to call him on the phone. It just means that you got to let him go. We will not ever be girls or boys again or friends again or couples again, but I've let you go so I can be free. Anybody tonight? Somebody tonight? Somebody tonight at the end, we're going to help you be free. And you got to say it and, and you got to mean it and you got to let God take your heart. And the, I don't care how simple it is. I don't care how tough it was. And y'all, we have been hurt. We, some of us have been through some horrible stuff, some horrible stuff, some horrible stuff. But God still wants you to forgive those people. That was a guy, that was a guy, that was a guy, that was a guy who was stopped by the police and, and, and um, the police did a false report on him and say he had drugs. He spent four years in prison for, for, for a crime he did not commit. While he was in prison, the cop, the cop got caught um, um, uh, and exposed and uh, fired for 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 for, for, pin, uh, for, for writing false reports on people, and, um, and he got sent to prison for a year and a half. They end up working at the same restaurant one day, true story, and they had to face each other. The cop said, the cop said, the ex-cop said, I'm sorry, I have no rhyme or reason for what I did. Will you forgive me? And the guy in prison had been contemplating the whole time. When I get out, I'm going to do him bodily harm. I'm going to hurt him real bad. But when the man said, will you forgive me? He said, yes. He didn't even hesitate. He said, that's all I want to hear is you tell me you were sorry. 
But sometimes people will not tell you that. And they travel around Wisconsin telling people about their story. Y'all, God will use our pain for our testimony. You don't see it right away. It's shameful sometimes. But God will use our pain as part of our testimony. It was shameful for me to hold on to that stuff for, for 23 years. I had to sit down and count the other day. I said, oh, I was about 40 years old when I finally called this man. That's 23 years, isn't it? Am I, is my math right? <laughs> well, let me say this to you as I hurry to a close. In, in the area of forgiveness, let me say this to you. You've got to remind yourself of your worth. You've got to remind yourself of your worth. You got to remind yourself. The Bible says in, in 1 Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people uh, for God's own possession, um, um, uh, to proclaim the virtues of Him who called you out of darkness to the marvelous light. Psalm 139, 13 and 14 says, You were fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are the works of His hand. Y'all, you cannot let other people's invasion of your life determine your self worth. You are valuable to society. You are valuable to your family. You are valuable to this church. You are valuable to your community. You are valuable to your job. You are valuable to the kingdom of God. You are valuable and never let anybody's narrative define who you are. They may look at your skin color and turn their nose. So, that's not my issue, it's yours. They may say stuff like you ain't you like you you're not about anything. So that's your narrative, not mine. I am a child of God's kingdom. Yes, you hurt me, but God is gonna heal me. Matter of fact, He already has healed me. And don't let anybody's words, don't let anybody's words determine your self worth. Because when you forgive people, you keep your self worth. If you let that keep you for years, then they keep your self-worth in, you know, in their hands, in their possession, and you don't give anybody that kind of power over your life. Nobody. I said not your parents, not your friends, nobody, not your children, anybody. You got to, you got to remind yourself of your self-worth. God has blessed you. And even though you went through the trauma, you're still here. Yeah. Hey, you're still here. You're still standing. But you know, the greatest part of forgiveness is this. Here's the greatest part. Here's the greatest, and I hope you found that friend already. Here's the greatest part of forgiveness is freedom. It boils down to freedom. Yeah. Somebody say freedom. Yeah. Freedom. God, by, the Bible says in Galatians 5.1, it's for freedom that God has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again with the yoke of slavery. Freedom. Because if you haven't forgiven people, you are in slavery. It's freedom, y'all. It's the greatest Benefit of forgiveness is freedom. Freedom to love, freedom to present ourselves before the Lord, freedom to live again, freedom to love again, freedom to live again, freedom to move forward, to move forward in our destiny. It's about freedom, church. How many of us want to be free? Yeah. You got to let that go. Remember that shark I told you about? He was free. He was free. He was free. He was free as a bird. He was free. But you cannot. You cannot have unforgiveness in your life and be free. Yeah, you may look good. Yeah, your hair is well. You have the finest clothes on and shoes and drive the nicest car out there. But you can just be bound up because of unforgiveness. And so God wants you to be free tonight. Free. And even if the person who offended you is dead, you still got to let them go. Sometimes you can take a balloon and, and put their name on it and, and stand outside and let it fly away. I've just released you. Now eyes free. Amen. Eyes free. 
I was free again. I'm free. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from resentment. I'm free from all facets that have hurt me. I'm free from heavy burdens. I am free. I close with this story. And we're going to call you up. I close with this story. I was a young lady who had a father who was dying. And she had a sister and a mom. And she said, I haven't forgiven my father. So I pulled her to the side. I said, why haven't you forgiven your father? I just can't. I said, your father's dying. If you don't forgive your father, you're going to live with this for the rest of your life. You're going to wish you had her when he's gone. I said, what you need to do is whatever happened, and, 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 and the sister mom had already told me, he didn't do nothing to her. She just didn't get away. I thought he did something devastating to her life. You know what I'm saying? He said, he ain't doing nothing to her. He just, she just spoiled. That's all it is. She's spoiled. She won't get away. And she's holding grudges against her dad because, because she want him to apologize first. And he ain't going to do it because that's who he is. I said, look, hey, look at her young sister. The best thing you can do because you ain't free. Yeah, you got a nice job. Yeah, you live in, in California. And yeah, you all up in the United States government, but you ain't free. You're young, but you ain't free. The best thing I can tell you as a pastor is that you go to your daddy and tell him I'm sorry for how I felt about you all these years and ask him to forgive you. And whether he says anything or not, you just let him go. He can die in peace. Somebody tonight, I don't know who you are, whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're out here live on social media. I don't know who you are. You've been holding on to some things in life. I want you to know one thing. I want you to know one thing. That forgiveness, it is not fair, but it is full of grace. God's grace has given us what we need. We, we can say, it, but that ain't fair, Pastor. Yeah, I know it ain't, but it's grace. <laughs> it's grace. You extending grace to somebody. Jesus extended grace to us when we got saved for the forgiveness of our sins. God gave us grace. Why can't we give grace? And y'all know we've done some stuff. Amen? Amen? We've done some stuff. And God has forgiven us for everything we've done. Everything we've done. He's forgiven us. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray, God, that, 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 that this message was heard tonight and received in the spirit in which it was given. And I know somebody is hurting tonight. Somebody is holding on tonight. Somebody... Somebody's, somebody got some stuff that nobody know about because they don't want to ever tell anybody you, you don't have to but tonight is the, your night to be free tonight is your night to let it go tonight is your night to take the hook off take the hook out and let it go tonight is the night to let it go so father I pray that you would stir the hearts of these people tonight you know them you know who they are you know their past you know what's going on you know everything and if somebody tonight is holding on to something, I pray, Lord, that you will let them release it tonight in Jesus' name and let it go. It's not fair. No, it wasn't fair I got hurt, but it's grace. Peter said seven times. You said 77 because, God, we've sinned more than 77 times. We have. And you've forgiven every sin we've asked for forgiveness for. You've asked, you have forgiven us of those sins. So, Father, thank you tonight, and just move by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe, maybe God spoke to you. This ain't the time to be shamed. Ain't the time to be embarrassed. We don't know what you're dealing with, but God does. If you know that you need to forgive some people in your life that has, you've held on for too long, don't be ashamed and embarrassed. Would you just come stand here? Anybody in the house? Anybody? Thank you. Somebody else? She's not the only one. Somebody else? Come on. Step out of your seat and come on. Come on. Somebody else, come on. Anybody else want to come? 
Somebody else? Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid to come. Don't be afraid. You may trickle up here, but come on. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. God wants you to be free. He wants you to just not hold on to stuff and be free. Anybody else want to come? Anybody over here want to come? Anybody in the back want to come? God showed me some folk, but I'm not going to call you out. You got to come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. You all right? All right. All right. You, you hearing God's now. I'm looking right at you. Come on. I'm looking right at you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm looking at you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I know you are leading the church. Come on. I was a pastor. Come on. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. You ought to want to be free. Anybody just want to just make their way? Just trickle on up here. Trickle, 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 trickle on up, trickle on up, trickle. If you're online tonight, if you're online, position yourself. Position yourself that you can ask for forgiveness. You can, you can, you can grant forgiveness to whomever has hurt you in your past. It may be a child. It may be a grown person. Uh, you may, you, you, you may have been a child. It may, you may have been grown, whatever the case may be. It could have been yesterday or this morning. I want you to be free. And you will never be free until you come forth. Anybody want to come? Don't be shame or embarrassed. It's your chance. Anybody over there? Think of, the th think of the situation of the person that, you th that you're thinking about right now. Think of it. God already knows what you're dealing with. Repeat after me. And I want you to mean this. Mean this on Facebook. Heavenly Father, I have held on too long. I've rationalized it. I've tried to forget about it. I try to live past it, but every now and then it pops up in my mind. The pain may have gone, but I've not forgiven them. I've not forgiven the situation. But tonight, Lord, I want to be free. First of all, Lord, forgive me for holding on. Forgive me for those ill feelings I felt. Forgive me for not following what you have already told me to do. Forgive those who trespass against me. Forgive those who sin against me. Right now, Lord, with your help, I can't do it by myself. With your help, I forgive them. Whether they're alive or whether they're dead, I forgive them. I release them. In the name of Jesus, take away that unforgiveness out of my heart and place in my heart grace. Give me grace. I know it wasn't fair, but give me grace. Grace to live, move, and have my being without having a heavy burden tucked on my spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, remove it as far as the east is from the west. Remove it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And now, God, I declare I'm free. They're free. I'm free. I'm free. Thank you for freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you go and be free and never pick it back up again. And Can every time you think about playing? picking it back up, you think about that shark that got away. Oh, somebody just sing a little bit, Nate. My sister, see you. Just sing a little bit. I'm free. Yeah.
sing this song. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No, no more longer bound. bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand. Thank you for your freedom in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for his help. Somebody say, help. Yeah. Raise your hands all over the house with me. And everybody say, Lord, I declare I am free. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord, I am free. For those that have loved ones that need the Lord, so would you please stand with me at this time? You got somebody in your life that's not saved. You got somebody in your life that needs the Lord. You got somebody in your life that needs to be forgiven. Let's just stand on their behalf. Maybe you got somebody in your life that you don't even like. Your family member, that's all right. You still stand for them. God is a good God. Somebody say, I'm free. Somebody say, I'm free. Forgiveness is one of the greatest miracles that God has given to mankind. It is the key that unlocks the door. It is the key that unlocks the door to salvation. It is the key that unlocks the door to all the blessings of God. So yes, we got loved ones that are not saved. But let's just pray for them. Raise your hands with me right now. And everybody say, Lord, save them by your power. One more time. Say, Lord, forgive them in the name of Jesus. Say one more time. Say, Lord, Set them free in the name of Jesus. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I recommit, I rededicate my life, my family, my children, and all that I have to you. Teach me how to live in forgiveness. Say it again. Teach me how to live in daily forgiveness. One more time, teach me how to live in daily forgiveness. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I am free. You are free. The Lord is on your side. God loves you, and he has a plan for your life. The Bible is very clear in Matthew chapter, chapter number 6. Chapter 6 is very clear. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. And maybe you heard me tell the story about the bird nest. I was out on my porch. So I walked out and I decided I'm gonna just gonna wipe all these birds off. But as I decided to say that and begin to think that in my mind, they all started a harmony of corpus. All together. So I said that would be cruel. So I left them alone. Then my wife came out last Sunday before church. She said, did you know there's a bird nest on our porch? You need to get rid of it. And I said, yeah, I've already dealt with it. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm, they've already hatched. I'm going to let them all fly off. And then I will, I'll go back and take care of the nest. She said, okay. For my word this morning, uh, this afternoon, tonight, Matthew 26, Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. He feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And as I began to drive to church that morning, and I began to think about God feeding 
the birds. I'm sorry, but it's stuck in my head. Because on all seven continents, he feed the birds. Preachers can say what they want to say about tithe. They can say what they want to say about giving. Saints can do what they want to do. But on all seven continents, there's no man that can say, I feed the birds. North America, South America, he feed the birds. I'm amazed. I watch a lot of animal channels. Africa, it takes all day to fly from one part of Africa to the next one. But there on that continent, God feeds the birds. Europe, Asia, Antarctica, and Australia. He feeds the birds. So if he feeds the birds, on all seven continents, I have made up in my mind that he is able to take care of every bill that you and I have. Do I have anybody in the house will say, I agree? Do I have anybody in the house will say, I agree? I know they raised the prime rate. I know the interest rate went up. But God feed the birds. If he feed the birds, your house is going to be okay. You're going to be able to pay your car note. God's going to take care of you. Somebody say, he feed the bird. Somebody say, I receive it. Come on, raise your hand and just say, I receive it. See, we get caught up in the, all the rhetoric and the, the theology and all the foolishness. But the bottom line is, God feeds the birds. Somebody say, he feed the birds worried about your little job. I worried about your little mortgage. My son is an engineer. And when he first got started in the field, they would find a rock as big as this whole building. They would drill down to it, tap into it. Oil would flow out of it. It's called fracking. And they would harvest it. And he showed me the picture and how it happens. I was amazed. So I'm not here to get anything from you. I'm here to build your faith. That in this season in Colorado, where the economy is going wild, where the interest rate has just been increased, you got to declare no bill can live. Oh, you don't have to believe it, but that's how I have lived. I didn't have the privilege of calling a dad saying, why didn't you do this or that? God has always been there, and he's able. I want to build your faith. That Don't worry about the interest rate. You're going to be all right. Somebody say, I'm going to be all right. Don't worry about it. God feed the birds on all seven continents. So I got up this morning and I told my wife, write my check for church tonight. I said, Lord, if they're going to raise the interest rate, I'm going to trust you at a whole nother level. And I know people get quiet when you start talking about money in the church. But I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your survival. I'm talking about your provision. I'm talking about God taking care of you. Because my Bible says he's able. Somebody say he is able. Somebody say he is able. I just come forward tonight. If everybody number low, everybody gives something. We don't know where this interest rate is going to go. Within 60 days, it's been raised twice. Make it up in your mind that you're going to serve the Lord. You're going to trust the Lord. I made up in my mind. He feed the birds on all seven continents. I'm going to forgive everybody that ever hurt me. And I'm going to live under the blessing. Live in the overflow. And God's going to bring opportunity and prosperity to your hands. Somebody say amen. Somebody say God is able. Say it again, God is able. Say it again, God is able. 
Say it again, God is able. Say it again, God is able. He feeds the birds. Jesus taught his disciples about giving to God. He says in Matthew 7, 7, ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Watch, you will not miss a meal. You will not miss a meal. God's going to take care of you. Let us all stand. Hold your gifts up to the Lord. My phone, if you give it my text, it's on the screen. But in this season, this is not the time to play games with God. Be faithful and declare every day, every time, you, every time I hear a bird outside of my window, I say, Lord, you, you feed the bird, so I know you're going to take care of me. You feed the birds, so I'm believing that you are able to meet all my needs. Raise your hands with me and everybody say, Lord, I give into your kingdom. I declare you feed the birds. Every bill in my life is paid. Say it again. Say, Lord, you feed the birds. Every bill in my life is paid. In Jesus' name I pray. If you're giving, come and let on the altar. That's an act of faith. Somebody sing up in here. Somebody worship the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody sing to the Lord. They good and the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, 
Raise your hand and let's receive it. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. Father, thank you for the word that came from your servant, Pastor Hall. We receive that word tonight. Help us to live daily through forgiveness. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the power of the living God that moves us beyond being stuck. We will let it go. Raise your hand and say, Lord, help me to let it go. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you for all your goodness in our lives. We love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday. Got a great word for you. You don't want to miss it. Praise the Lord.